sitting in an office changing cigarettes, waiting until they're called out to do something special, exactly. which yeah, is uh, right. what the BBC was, really. Yeah. And it had a, room for, a separate room for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, this, this current government appears to be intent on private, A, privatising Channel 4, and B, making the BBC not um, public funded, yeah. not funded by uh, licensing, which I think is very sad. Yeah. It is, it's, um, and it, the, the irony is really, it's sort of like that Channel 4 was born of a sort of a, a, a Margaret Thatcher thing, really. Yeah. It's a sort of a, a that's, soft, that's the real irony of it, yeah. Um, public, it made a soft public, um, yeah. public enterprise. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's, it's ironic now that we're, we're through those years, and now it's, now it's going to be sort of like, well, personally, I think Amazon are just going to come in and sweep that up. I mean, the amount of Amazon content that's coming through now with the... Yeah. Um, uh, the US Open final that the Amazon logo in it and that just piped through. Um, you know, I, I can just see that now being a, a, a conduit for like a, a streaming service. Certainly. Yeah. But I think that's the direction of travel now. I don't think, you know, it, it maybe like four channels as it was at the time, you needed that. And now it's yeah. all, all driven on that. So, you know, bringing it back to teletext, it, it really. That's the indirect child of of the you know Channel Four really. Yeah. It's driven and think of. I have to say, and I'm sure Peter would agree with me that working in teletext in the early stages was such fun. It was exciting. You were breaking new ground all the time. Um, from an engineering point of view, it must have been fantastic fun, I should think. Well, I wasn't there from the beginning, I was there from 2000, which was, um, I think, it was just beginning to wind down. Right. But, uh, we had a. Um, when did the internet actually begin? The World Wide Web. And it came it's clear that teletext wasn't going to be in the long run. It certainly was a lot of fun because we had one of these um, um, boffins called Peter Whitesell. I know Peter. He was from. He made something simple. Turn it into something very, very complicated. Yeah. <laughs> then he'd give it to me to implement. So <laughs> it was. Uh, well, you got all the good jobs, didn't you? Oh, yes. Huh? Stuff like fast text. Why, why you have to have one bit from here and one bit from there and then reverse that one? Uh, you can't have an eight, you have to have a zero. Right. Because, uh, because of reasons. And um, we came up with. Most complicated schemes for price um, banks. We insisted it had to be ideal for that to be, which is. Um, price banks was, was the internal information system around the BBC, wasn't it? It was internal, yes. but um, Not just BBC? It was just BBC and me because they broadcasted it on BBC One and BBC Two. Right. So if you had. A suitable receiver like that box in the corner, right? You could actually receive uh, all of their schedules down to one twenty fifth of a second, right? So that was, um, uh, yeah, it was fun working in the background of CFAX and Teletext, going into the control room at the BBC, yeah, and, uh, thinking what would happen if I pulled that plug. <laughs> It must be very tempting from time to time, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, but uh, no, I wouldn't want to do with all the kids of Blue Peter or whatever. <laughs> or switch it into 4 by 3 and spend the ratio. <laughs> but that's up to my own, my own bit of area of expertise. The possibilities are endless, aren't they? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to do a mind back. No, it's all more. Yeah, I'd it's love to give, give you the mic back and ask you some questions about, about this. Uh, I, no, I, go for it. Yeah, so um, I'll give you this one. There we go. I'll take that one. Thank, thank you, Peter. Okay, right. So the, I'm picking on Intel facts here because a, I can I can lift it with one hand. <laughs> right. Um, the, the Intel facts bit is. Um, you, you, well, you can prop a door open with it, or, or even jack a car up. <laughs> so um, it, it really is good. But um, 
to just give you an idea of the amount of um, work that goes into a bid, we've got here a, um, a questionnaire that was sent out to um, Apex users. We've got some findings at the back here. And um, it's, it gives you a good snapshot of when, obviously, this was uh, this bit was put in, what was it, early 1980s, was it? Uh, yes, uh, I think, when did I join in Telfax? 1983. Yeah. So that would have been 80, late 84, beginning of 85, I think. Oh, right, okay. So this will be, it tells you in 1984 probably where Teletext doesn't hit critical mass yet. You've still got a lot of people not with without the decoder in the television, so they weren't able to access it. So they're, people are probably going next door or, or seeing in laws and, and, and turning turning on their tech service that we've got here, which is the main tech service used by the respondent. So um, the um, or Oracle out of men. 23 men, uh, it's just like percentage I guess, yes. so 23% said that uh, of men use Oracle, but 56% of men use CFAX. Um, but when you move over to uh, women as a demographic, Oracle get a few more back. Uh, the 33% of women use Oracle, but still 43% of women use CFAX. So all the way through, the, the CFAX is the sort of like the go-to is, is the go-to service. Well, why do you think that was, not? I, I think um, partly because the BBC did a lot more promotion of Teletext than, than ITV did. And that really goes back to what I was saying before about the ITV companies, although they jointly owned Oracle, um, they were a bit nervous about it because the, obviously ratings are key if you're selling advertising. I mean, they're key to any broadcaster. But if you're trying to make money out of it, the number of people watching your channel, um, that's a big deal. And I think that, that for a long while, the ITV companies thought that it was something they had to do, Teletext, because the BBC were doing it. Um, but they didn't push it very hard. Whereas the BBC were doing things like CFAX is here, this is CFAX, etc., etc., and, and promoting it fairly heavily um, in the regions as well. Yeah, and uh, coming through, the, in the next table along, they, they actually dive in, uh, they go into some further depth. And, you know, put, there's, there's about 14 or 15 reasons here, and predominantly um, CFAX is preferred um, in all of these, you know, um, better information, news, programme information, children's entertainment. But, you know, there's not a huge disparity to the two, but the one that actually sticks out the most more is... Uh, preference to offer Oracle is higher and better layout and so we're looking at in 19 so if I want to bring Jason in on this so what, what sort of format were Oracle using in 1984 and um, and what sort of format were the big and CFAX what were they using? In terms of what? Um, well this, this survey says that a lot of the respondents here preferred the layout of the ITV service. So it, it's actually, if you look at those two screens over there, they're, okay they're both CFAX, that's what they mean by the layout. I think. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I, I'm quite surprised to hear you say that, 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 that the public actually preferved the layout of Oracle. Yeah, it's yeah, in black and white. Right. So page 42, yeah, yeah. It's, um, and, and the horoscopes um, are better as well. <laughs> <laughs> well that wouldn't have been difficult because the yeah. BBC didn't do horoscopes. No, no. Oh, and the, and the, the holidays as well, which is a, a, a McGovern as well, they don't do the holidays either, anybody, internet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. CFAX don't do holidays. But uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's really interesting stuff. And um, you, I can see why you won the bits. You've really done your homework. <coughs> well, again, you know, we, we always tended to put a lot of effort into the bids that we put together for editorial services. Um, I mean, for a long while, Fortel was the only contract that yeah. Intel Fax had. Um, and the second one was S4C, Spectre. And that was a Welsh, uh, a Welsh language service. So we ended up employing Welsh speaking journalists in London to create the Welsh pages that, that went out on Spectre. 
Spectel used to use a lot of Fortel pages because obviously a lot of the programs that went out on uh, S4C were in English. Yes. So they just used to lift the, the stuff from, from the Fortel servers. Um, but the, the, what made it different was the fact that we had four world speaking journalists working out of London mm -hmm. putting it together. Um, and that, those two, Fortel and Spectel, um, we ran for about three years, I think, maybe four years. Um, and then we got Superchannel. Nobody says it's a printout. I don't see it. It's not a thermal paper, I hope. If you take them. This isn't. I've got some prints outside of thermal paper. I'd say, Lance, I didn't want to hold it if it wasn't thermal. I've done it. I'm going to mark it up. Right. Um, so that was, that was the third um, program related service that we started. Um, and really, it sort of snowballed from there. Um, as more and more satellite and cable broadcasters came online, we were jumping in with both feet. Yeah. Almost immediately, they came on in saying, Would you like a teletext service? You were the, the go to yeah. teletext setup service, you would just do a parachute in and set up. So the Super Channel, that was on ESP, wasn't it? That's the right. Yeah, yeah, the Marco Polo satellite. That's the right. That's the one. Yeah. yeah. And you've got a memory. Yeah, no, it's a Rathbone Place. That's uh, you, my favourite computer magazine. Is there? You're Sinclair. Right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, off Tottenham Court Road. Yeah, so, that's uh, right. But yeah, the Super Channel. That was, um, and again, I think that's probably where you, you know you've got sort of groundbreaking information service um, going to perhaps an outlet that isn't going to reach the people that it wants to reach, maybe. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I think it did reasonably well because Super Channel was actually owned by the Dutch. It was a Dutch company. I said, <coughs> um, and it was obviously going out all over Holland. Um, and Holland, and the NOS were, were big in telecoms. So they, they spent a lot of money, put a lot of effort into telecoms. So I think they had a ready-made market in Holland. Yes. Um, and when we came along. As it turned out, probably just before it arrested, yes. <coughs> said, "Would you like a service?" They said, "Yes." So, did NOS at any point say, uh, you know, say, or would you like to um, put, put any of your sort of like marks on, on anything for their terrestrial services at all? No. Because um, um, NOS, I, I do remember I like living in the east. Right whenever the sun came out, I would uh, start getting NOS one come over on, on TV, the really? Yeah, yeah, you, you wouldn't get the sound carrier because that came through differently, but you, they'd, they'd be showing neighbours or something like that, you know, so whenever your whenever you high pressure came in, the, the, the TV would just stop, you knew you could turn it into about 35 UHF, right. and then you'd get NOS through, but uh, they would only start broadcasting in the afternoon. They would actually do pages of their teletext service when they were off air. Right. Their yeah. service was yeah. like it was like a blue screen of ghetto writing, yeah. and they had a bar on the side that went down when the page was about to change. So it's basically a timer, like a frame bar. Yeah, a frame bar. So I was wondering whether that would be like a, like a level two or a level two and a half, or whether that would just be like their own insert. I think that would be too early for level yeah. two or level two and a half. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were only just starting to play around with level two mm -hmm. as I left in Telfax in 2001. Yeah. Um, so I think that would have been way, way before yeah. that, uh, that happened. Yeah. But uh, after Super Show, we, we started doing things for UK Gold, UK Living. Well, this is capturing um, I can't remember half you used to do the program listings that this is what I finished. This is the <laughs> Discovery <laughs> Show. Yeah. Discovery, Discovery show. yeah. Um, Look where that is now, it's part of the Disney yeah. Empire. Yeah. Yeah. That's right, yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. No worries. And uh, so the Oh, I like the bag. Four sports bags. Yes. There's, a, there's a blue This was a bit of merchandising that they did. That is absolutely incredible. And, uh, and they that sponsored a little uh, a school football team for a little while. <laughs> um, Telfax sponsored um, a school football team for a little while, and they all had these bags, and they had the name on, on the shirts. Yeah. Oh, wow. So the Fortel logo on the yeah. shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, uh, I bought it along just because we used to do a lot of merchandising on Fortel. Right. Um, uh, we had. I'm really sorry that we ran a, a service called Gallery 
you remember Gallery? Does anyone remember Gallery? The little four tail? Yeah, the video. Right, okay. You'll have to, you'll have to elaborate. Okay. The, the idea was that we realised fairly early on that people love teletext graphics, like those on the screen appearing up there. So we said, okay, we're going to send out packs which have got teletext grid preset. <laughs> We're going to invite people to design their own teletext graphics and send them back into the portal, the and then we'll, we'll recreate them and put them up on there. Oh, and yes, they used yes. to get the pack, they used to get a pack of, uh, of coloured pens uh -huh. to colour it in, in the teletext colours. Yes. Um, okay, so and I'm really, I'm really annoyed. I never kept one, right. so <laughs> well, it's long gone now. Well, I know that uh, Dan Barrowman um, has done something very similar on a few um, road shows. He's done like teletext art prints, right. where people colour things in, and he would uh, convert a picture in and upload it as well. So I hope we gave you the idea. Yeah, exactly, and I know that um, uh, ARD do in Germany as well. Yeah, I know ARD. Yeah. So, so um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 a, it's a brilliant concept and it's still being used. Right. Um, and it's funny when you look in some of the old computer magazines, so like, yeah, how people use sometimes Grift, like the X81 software and go, oh yes, our, our programming pack includes graph paper and a pen. Right. <laughs> with the app, so with the app. Very high tech. Very, very, very high tech, yeah, 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 proper drafts and stuff. Oh, this is beautiful. So we've, um, we've got the, one of the merchandise is uh, Intel Facts. And it's a uh, it's like a matchbox car that's made by a company called Lego. Lego, yeah. Lego. Yeah. Uh, not made of Lego, no kids. And um, um, and it's got the, the dog on there, which I recognise. Yeah. Fourteen. <laughs> Fourteen. Yes, that's beautiful. That. <coughs> yeah, I, I was talking to Ian Irving actually, yeah. um, but who created Fourteen. Um, and he was really sorry he couldn't make it. And the problem is he lives in the middle of Scotland, so it was quite a long journey for him. And he's he's approaching his eighties now, so. No, he's in his eighties. He's in his eighties. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's uh, that's that's yeah. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he's he's the best as far as teletext graphics are concerned. I know lots of people would argue with me, but I, I just think he had such a brilliant eye. And, and he came up with the idea for 40, I did. Um, and he, he came into my office one day and said, oh, this idea, can we do a Teletext cartoon series? So I said, yeah, I laugh, I did. went, no, no, I thought it was out And that was the birth of 40. And uh, it, it, it was incredibly successful, 40. Um, I think for a while, is it MIT, Massachusetts Institute yeah. of Technology, and 4T as their mascot? Really? Yeah. Oh wow, that's incredible, because the, um, the, if anything happens with the internet, it tends to go down with MIT first, and it's where yeah. the data side tends to be how, how things are for the next 25 years on, online. So I know we were very honoured to have yeah. them when they, they contacted and said, do you mind if we have 4T as, as our mascot? Well, that's certainly crazy indeed, absolutely. Uh, that's incredible. <coughs> Incredible. So um, yeah, the um, the quality, uh, the animation of the comic, obviously, was was, was then taken on. Used to be about Eternal the Worm yeah. and things like that. But you can tell when I saw the dog, I knew that I knew instantly the artist. And yesterday uh, at, at the road show, we were talking about making art on the ZX Net editor that uh, that we'd be doing today, and we were commenting that we could recognise people's artwork just in the techniques that they adopt yeah. um, and, and you know even the placement of a couple of pixels can make the difference between a Raquel Myers or, or, or a Steve Horsey yeah. um, and, you, and you can get to the second straight away and we were, we were having much fun about your cruise ship <laughs> and I believe the last time you were here you set the world record for a cruise ship on a BBC I can't Did remember I? how many seconds was that, was that produced in <laughs> I'll take your word for that. Your very quick at your cruise ship. Uh, yeah, the cruise ship was quick. Um, and my other party trip. Ah, oh, it's not, it's not. <laughs> That's the one we did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> I need some assistance there, so if you could replace that abysmal effort later on today, that would be much appreciated. Um, I was trying to remember the last time I actually created a telefax graphic. When we were here. Yeah, it was probably when we were here the last time. Yeah, you know, that, that cruise ship. Um, it's a long while since I've done it. I'll, I'll give it a go. So, yeah. Well, we've got a laptop there. If you, you know, have, have a cup of tea and, uh, right. okay. and have, a, have, a, have a twiddle, as they say. Uh, and I know Colin McIntyre, who was the editor of CFAX, when we were showing people around, 
Um, he used to make sure I was on duty. Um, and he'd say, of course, we can, we can make um, the, the headers um, using teletext graphics. And he used to get me to, to produce the word headlines, but with no teletext graphic characters. So it was 555 five equals 5, 555, five, five, W5, U4, all the way across the word headlines. And then I'd put the characters in at the end and it would come up saying headlines. This is incredible. We were talking about this yesterday. Um, so in the early days, you'd have one graphics terminal on, on, on the desk, yeah. on, on the floor. Um, so we were, we were perhaps, we were walking in your shoes last night and thought, well, if you got so proficient at it, you could just whack it out on the terminal mm. and you wouldn't even need to visit. And uh, yeah, so that, that, that actually stands up to what we're talking about yesterday, doesn't it? Right. Yeah, we were talking about WYSIWYG editors and yeah, right. And then and there being no such thing as a WYSIWYG editor in Italian it's always a wiggy wig. What you get is what you get. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I've not heard that before. What you get is what you get. It's absolutely true. Well, well, well then you have a couple of things which you can absolutely prove badly. You know, we, we've sort of jumped on that you both. That's all right. It's our pleasure. Um, so, yeah, why we came? No, it's brilliant. Uh, so thank you very much. Have a cup of tea, and then when you're ready. Um, we want you to show us how it's done on the, the editor. No pressure here at all then. No, no pressure, but you will get a round of applause. Thank you very much. Cheers. You're welcome. Cheers. Thank you.